But that is a um, photo of you. What a friendly looking guy right there. Yeah. He couldn't even so smile. What, what an investigator would do is like, if yeah. that was uh, part of a crime investigation, run a search and see, uh, you know, in the information. So we just confirm that photo. Okay. And now it's searching over 20 billion images on the open internet. So these are all things that are uh, open. So if you want me to click on a photo to see more, uh, you, you do that photo. So how different is this than Google Images? Well, it's Google Images doesn't search based on faces. You can go to type a name in and look at images. I got you. So, you know, that case that it, uh, investigating that uh, child pornographer in, is in the background of another photo, he didn't tag himself in that. So right? I'm glad you guys got Joker in the back, by the way. That's the best Joker, Heath Ledger. Yeah. Um, so how many, how many pictures came up? How many pictures are you so seeing here come up? 96, 96 results. results. There are more, but like we have our system cut off at a certain point. Okay, so uh, let's yeah. just say I am working for an agency. So what do I do now? With, with so, these for searches? example, you might be in, uh, say, this was a criminal investigation where you're trying to identify a suspect. Sometimes it's a victim too. So, uh, you know, especially in child uh, pornography cases, they don't know who the victims are. You were trying to find a name of a person, right? So, uh, in this case, uh, can I click on that? Sure. Link? This goes to a website, and that website might have information about the name. So. Here we can see that your name, Patrick, Bet David, and it's, you know, an Instagram profile. So this that is yours. actually who that is? That's actually Brittany Kaiser, who oh, was cool. a whistleblower for Cambridge Analytica. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with her. I've heard of Cambridge yeah. Analytica. Not so let's do, let's do a couple of the other guys that we have here. So um, we'll see. So let's Google for Faces. Okay. Kai, good for you. Kai, at least Kai's got a nice smile right. from Norway. How do you not love that guy? And thanks to Kai for volunteering. Yeah, thank you, Kai. Tyler. But again, it's only anything that's out there um, that's public. We'll... Kai, you're officially in the system, just so you know. Well, all the photos that are uploaded don't get added. It's only searching the other systems. Let's see what so. comes. Oh, you got a picture right there when he was younger, top right. So we can okay, this is us, but if you go to, all right, keep going. Who is smile. this? Kai, what are you doing? Is that a beer? Okay, <laughs> there go. Oh, my gosh, Kai. All right, so let's, uh, uh, yeah, that's starting to really concern me, that picture right there. We've got to have a conversation with Kai. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. in the context of, uh, you know, investigation <coughs> for law enforcement, you're just trying to ID someone, right? Yeah. Or also verify who it is. Say this, you have an eyewitness lineup, right? Things like that. This can be a way more accurate way to ID people. Um, and so that's how the system works in a nutshell. So if you take this context of, uh, you know, someone robbed a bank, right? Uh, someone shot somebody and all there is is video footage and you don't have a name. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't you use this tool and this data set? So I think that's the part that people miss a little bit because you have to dig into the context around it. Um, and so, and we think there's a lot of great applications of the facial recognition that are protective of consumers that are opt-in, right? What if when you signed up for your bank account, you opted in to have your photo, so whenever there's a large transaction of $10,000 or more, that it, it does a facial recognition check. So I think there's two sides to the technology, um, and that side's the, the less controversial one, um, and it's a great way to prevent why, crime why, fraud. Why is the majority of the world okay with all the other stuff, but not with what, not with what you're doing? I think why, why are people okay with going to the bank, take a picture, hey, can we do this? Sure. Hey, I'm going to go get my ID, DMV takes a picture, whatever. I go to this place, take, that's fine. Why are, why are people comfortable with that, but so many are not comfortable with you? Well, I think there's two parts of the innovation. Yeah. One is the size of the data set, right? Uh, now it's 20 billion images. And, 20 um, billion? You were just at 3 billion. You guys are at 20 billion now. 3, then we were 10, now we're 20. Yeah. Holy moly. Okay. From the open internet. Um, and, and so in this context, every photo is a potential clue to you know, exonerate someone, uh, help solve a crime. Uh, and so I think that's part of it, and it's really accurate now. I, if you look at the history of facial recognition, in 2011, 2012, Facebook had tag your friends, but they only had to be accurate, one out of a thousand. You might have a thousand friends on Facebook. Then Apple did unlocking your phone, but that's only matching the same photo. And what we were able to do was search millions or billions of photos accurately. These are more 
um, that's a harder problem to do. So, so I think those are the two things that made people more concerned. Um, and we're living in a time now where technology companies were very beloved in the 2010s, right? Google and Facebook, they couldn't do anything wrong. And I think rightly so that a lot of people now have a more critical eye towards technology, especially big tech. If you enjoyed this short clip, click over here to watch another short clip. And if you want to watch the entire episode, the entire podcast, click here.